and some strike, sister? Let me set the board. I was just passing by. I. Mmm, first timer, huh? Don't worry about it. I'll go easy on you. You got any pieces? Uh, no. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set. A Tanakh original straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards, too. All right, let's start off simple. The Tanakhs like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine, and each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the distance they can strike from, and of course, their health. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm, and move it forward. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need it. Gotta move that machine forward. Just need to, um... Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round. So go ahead and pick a second machine. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. We're forging onwards. Let me move my pieces here. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine's combat power against the opponent's. A machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine is standing on and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power and your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Did you get all that? Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by attacking my machine. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now, some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. That's about it for your turn, then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, 
Grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds, machines have both armored points and weak points. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. You're go ahead and move downwards towards my remaining piece. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a second time. And by the look of your machine's health, you'd be sacrificing your piece to defeat mine. But sometimes, that can be a good thing. Overcharge your machine to attack mine a second time, and I'll show you what I mean. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, since you're the one attacking, you're gonna receive your victory points before I do which means you can reach the coveted seven victory points first. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Now, you'll notice you didn't get quite up to seven victory points this time, but you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget, these are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in Good your favor. Life. Though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. I know I've lost my fair share of pieces after a night of machine hunting or brew hopping. Oh, no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Thanks. I'll think about it. Ah! I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can encounter in a game of strike. Knowing when and how to use them can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Terrain mainly affects your machine's combat power. As you know, when fighting an opponent's machine, you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack. Now let's take a look at your machine's combat power. Combat power is the sum of a machine's attack power and the value of the terrain it's standing on. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. There you go. Now, choosing the right terrain doesn't just improve your offense. It can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. 
since you're it's standing on grassland terrain this terrain has a value of zero this means your machine's combat power adds up to two points my machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position but they have the higher ground they're standing on forest terrain which is worth one point this means my combat power adds up to one point now the front of my machine is colored blue this means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it which means my machine gets an extra point giving it a total of two combat power points if we compare the combat power of both machines you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. Ha, <laughs> see? When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want. All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more it'll add to your machine's combat power. However, there are two other terrains that work a little differently. This is what we call a chasm. Only flying machines can be placed on those. But it'll take away two combat points if you do, so be wary. This is marsh terrain. Landing on it will take away one combat power point from most machines. It'll also keep your machine from moving for the rest of the turn. Here, let me show you. Grab that machine on your left. See? All you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again. Or you can overcharge your machine to get out of there. You can still attack any nearby enemies so you're not completely helpless. Well, I think that's enough yammering for me for now. Promise it'll all come in handy next time you play. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players will choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponents. In other words, it's machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a gunner type machine here. This means they'll only hit the farthest enemy in their attack range. Let's move that machine forward and end your turn so we can take a look at the rest of the pieces. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram type machine. Attack an enemy with it and it'll push the piece backwards like this. See, now my machine has taken over your machine spot on the board. 
This is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground. Looks like we have one more piece to look at. Oh, now this is a beauty of a piece, a dash type machine. When it attacks, it'll move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path, including your own. So make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races. You should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to attack at all. Here, I'll show you. Look, it even rotated your piece. A nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your set. If you look at your notes, you'll notice this particular machine has one of the skills I mentioned before. There's quite a few of those, and... We haven't even looked at all the machine types yet. But I'm pretty sure you've got more important things to do, so I made you a list. It's got all the tips and tricks we talked about, too. I think that about does it for now, so if you want to play a real game, just let me know. Let's do this! My turn. Your turn. Come up. You're up, Red. to make my move. Looks like you're down to one piece. Well, that's done now. Okay, let's see. Now that was a game, even if I lost. Good luck. to get this. That's it for me. Time to make my move. Board's all yours. Or move red. My turn. You're up, red. Not that easy to get through my machine's armor, is it?
Okay, let's see. One less piece on the board. Ah, off the board it goes. Knocked right off the board. That was brutal. Your move, Red. Time to get serious. Board's all yours. Just one piece. Oh, I thought I had that one. Play. Your turn. Time to make my move. That was brutal. Your move, Red. Time to get serious. You're up, Red. My turn. Well, that's done now. Your turn. One less piece on the board. to make my move. That's it for me. Ah, off the board it goes. That was brutal. Knocked right off the board. Board's all yours. A single machine left? <sighs> that ain't good. My turn.
Board's all yours. Okay, let's see. You got me down to one piece. I am impressed. Ah, oh, <laughs> looks like I lost. <laughs> This is going to be fun. Your move, Red. I'm up. Your turn. That was a surprise. Well, that's done now. You're up, Red. The board it goes. Time to get serious. That's it for me. That was brutal. One less piece on the board. You're just hammering down on my pieces now. Ah, knocked right off the board. Ah, off the board it goes. Your move, Red. Time to make my move. Board's all yours. Well, spark my forge. You have beaten me on every one of my boards. Now that deserves a prize, I say. You know where to find me, Red. I, 
I'm sorry, I'll be right with you. Uh... Okay, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying it's overkill. It's a weapon! Kill is the point. Not if it blows the user's arm off! Oh, just, just, just stop talking! Where are we? Ah! <clears throat> so, uh... You, you look like someone who's always searching for a new weapon. Am I right? Actually, I... Ugh. But you're just not! I am with a customer! I... I'm not a customer. I got it! Triple the powder! It'll blow a strider sky high! Ba-boom! One shot kill, guaranteed. Uh... Maybe I am. Then you are in the right place at the right time, Red! How would you like to be the proud owner of the world's first machine-enhanced... Explosive, done-in-one, machine-wrecking... Yet perfectly safe, javelin thrower. Are you two from around here? Nah, the claim. Dad sent us out west in search of some unknown opportunity. Said we'll know it when we see it. Sounds like you had other ideas. Let's just say that opening another trading post for my parents isn't how I want to make my mark in this world. <sighs> I imagine traveling alone must be nice. So she's your partner? My apprentice and my sister. She's why we're out here. It was an incident. Another incident. Involving explosives? Ba boom And Dad's precious homebrew. He shipped us out the next day. Huh. Tell me more about this weapon of yours. I saw a scroll when I was a kid by some Karja scholar who wandered out west. I had a scary drawing of a Tanakh warrior hunting with a kind of javelin thrower. Effective? Yes. Basic? Undoubtedly. But coming out here made me remember it. And I am on the brink of vastly improving the tool's archaic design. Whereas I will perfect it. I can use machine parts to enhance the user's throw, increase the projectile's velocity. Well, Boomer here is adamant that enhancing the projectile is better. Namely, with explosive tips. Boomsticks. Why not both? That... could work. There's one small snag. I need the parts to make the first working model. Well, for starters, I'll need... Charger horns. Intact. Yeah, that. Just be sure to shoot them off before the machine goes down. Otherwise, they break. But the real innovation, and keep it to yourself, is a fang horn rib. There's a mean one east of here. Blow it sky high. Boomer! You get them for me. It's yours. My treat. You have a deal. How goes it, Harry? There's a charger herd. Gonna have to shoot off the horns for Dell and Boomer.
I should have enough charger horns for Della and Boomer now. Just need a rib from that fang horn they were talking about. Keep some extra on hand. Boomer said that Fanghorn should be nearby. There's the Fanghorn. Gonna have to take it down to get its rib. Should be able to harvest the tip now. Better fill up like hand.
got everything I need for Dell and Boomer. Now, to see about that weapon of theirs. This will come in handy. I know that look. You've got all the parts, haven't you? Here you go. Outstanding! I only need a few minutes to finish the prototype. I'll take the version that won't blow my arms off. Thanks. Hi. So did you blow up any machines to get the parts? Or any bandits? You really like explosions, huh? Here we go. With the boomsticks? Oh, you betcha. Um, is it safe? Probably. Can I have one? No! Ah. Uh. Cause we're gonna make you something even better. The boom Ignoring me again! Um... Is it safe? Probably. Can I have one? No! Ah. Uh. Cause we're gonna make you something even better. Ba boom! Ignoring me again! Uh. Um, is it safe? Probably. Useful for making dyes. This place has seen better days. I don't think I can get past them. Guess I should leave it for now.
Made it. And there's another one of those devices. What? The lens. Guess I'll figure out what to do with it later. on to me. Always good to have extra. Welcome, Elvin.
You'll need those out there. Full, but my stash has room. Sir? So, this is the Forbidden West. A whole new frontier to explore. The coordinates from the spire should lead to silence in Hades. And just maybe a backup of Gaia. It won't be easy out there. The blight, the storms, Regala's machine writers. But I'll have to push through it all. Find a way to fix the world. Like Elizabeth would. The woman who led the ambush, Regala, had a lot of machines under her command. There's only one other person who has that kind of knowledge. Silence. But what's his angle? Why help to knock the rebels? Good spot to test the shield wing. But I climb down and I can glide. <laughs> It worked! Wow, okay. <coughs> to knock the rebels. Looks like they've set up camp close to Baron Light. I should see what they're up to. They've got riders patrolling the area. But be careful. Still getting a signal for my focus. Atomic. If I override it, I can get data on the surrounding area. There's the Atomic that's sending the signal. Looks like a satellite dish. If I can climb it. Should be able to reach that tall neck easily enough. I need ammo.
What is that? A power generator? No shots left. Can't climb any higher, but it looks like this thing can rotate. If I can figure out a way to turn the power back on, I might be able to move things around and find a way up. that generator below the dish going. There's the generator. Bet this power cell can get it running. Power's back. I should check that console I found earlier. Let's see what this thing does. I should be able to get to that tall neck now. Just gotta find the right spot. Looks like I might need to glide onto the tall neck. Just gotta time it right. But... There we go. Time to override the big guy.
bottlenecks and map data to other machines. Shocking was not much use against that. Looks like the coordinates Solens gave me matched that wreckage. Did he install Hades on another Titan? I can grab this from my stash later. This is it. The location of the coordinates I scanned from the spire. The workshop underneath a dead Horus Titan. Just the kind of place Silence would slink away to. But what was he doing here? Poor Hades. So cramped in there. No room to think. You can't even speak. Now the processing orb of a Titan, on the other hand, well, you're used to that. Once I load you on that, you'll be so much more comfortable. 
until interrogations begin anyway. Some kind of log. Most of it's redacted. But it looks like silence put a lot of work into forcing Hades to talk. Device is blinking. I guess Silence wants me to check it out. Aloy, consider this message a beacon to help guide you out of the fog of ignorance. Using explosives, I've detached the processing orb from the Titan overhead, a perfect cage for our mutual friend, Hades, in order to render it cooperative. Tell her what we've discussed about the mysterious signal that gave you life. See where this trail leads. So here I am, following along after silence like a fool. After he tricked me by rigging his lance to steal Hades. Crazy AI that wants to kill everything. You can't just let me do the same thing and destroy it. Now I'm gonna have to put up with more of a self-righteous bull. My focus is detecting some kind of locator beat.
refreshing. I guess. Shane doesn't like fire. better. Silence must be pretty confident he's found a backup of Gaia, but how? Every place I've checked, every lead, they've all been dead ends. All backups purged. So what did Hades tell him? <laughs> the merchant. Didn't expect to see anyone else out here. Uh, might oh be there! Supply. What's Honora doing this far west? Ah, no matter, no matter. I can get you stocked up for the wild. What was that for? Shock in the wild. Looks like the trail goes into the hillside. See where this goes. I guess Silence used that machine to haul his prize.
That must be the orb silence stuck Hades in. From the door. Looks like a pharaoh facility. Or a zero dawn? <laughs> Is that you? System threat detected. You don't look so good. You are the Ankhari. Come to destroy me? Yes. Permanently this time. Even like this, you're a threat to Gaia. Once I resurrect her. So you have not yet secured Gaia. What did silence do to you, Hades? It's like you've been hollowed out. Silence interrogated me. And what did you tell him? Data error memory structures disintegrate. You don't remember any of it? I remember you. What, like me beating you at the spire? Okay, that's not going anywhere. Silence asked you where to find a backup of Gaia. Beta error memory structures disintegrate. Right, because that would have been easy. When the mysterious signal transformed you, it made Gaia's other subordinate functions conscious too. You escaped when Gaia destroyed herself, but so did they. Where did they go? Each function migrated to coordinates based on... Data error memory structures disintegrated. Bunch of crazed AIs, scattered who knows where, doing who knows what. Hephaestus kills thousands every year with the combat machines it keeps making. And you nearly ended the world. Seven more functions out there cooking up trouble? It's not a happy thought. You are unhappy. Good. Anyone ever tell you you've got a great personality, Hades? Sarcasm detected. Yeah, didn't think so. Do you know where Silence went? So you don't know anything more than I do. Great. Do you know why Silence dragged you to these ruins? Silence intended you find me here. Obviously. But why? What was this place? Location is square. Data error. Memory structures disintegrate. But you... I guess I'll find out when I go inside. Silence questioned you about the mysterious signal. The one that woke you, gave you consciousness. Who sent it? Signal transmitted by masters. And who are they? Masters look me to destroy earthly life. Who would want that? Data error memory structures disintegrate.
Enough. It's time to finish this. Does Aloy still think she can restore Gaia? Save life on Earth? Yeah, Aloy does. Then you are defeated. Extinction inevitable. What would you know, Hades? Twice you tried to destroy life on Earth, and twice you failed. The only extinction you ever brought about is your own. And there's no tricked out lands to save you this time. You are incorrect. Three times, Hades extinguished life. What? You remember this? Yes, data intact, non viable biospheres aborted in years 254 2161 2168. So? That, that's centuries ago. It's what you were designed to do. Current biosphere is version 5. There will be no version 6. There won't need to be. I'm saving this one. Master Override, arms. Connected. Stay name and rank. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime. Extinction. Master Override activated. Bridging Extinction Protocol. I see you've dealt with Hades. Yeah. Think maybe you can stay dead this time? It will. You can trust. Trust? Yes. Trust. As in, since I did what you could never do, and extracted all of Hades' priceless knowledge, you can trust that I was willing to actually let you destroy it this time. So back to holograms instead of face to face? What, afraid I'd stab you or something? There's a reason I'm I... I'm using the same spyware, I see. So, all those times I called, you could have just answered. But I guess you just prefer to go on spying all this time. My world stopped revolving around you months ago, Aloy. I've had work to do. Countless hours of research. As demanding and time-intensive as it has been critical to the fate of this planet. <laughs> right. Of course. You're just trying to save the world, too. That's right. The difference, of course, is that unlike you, I've produced results. Did you find a backup of Gaia or not? Oh, yes. I believe I did. Where? Voila. Why do you think I summoned you here? Behind that gene-locked hatch lie the ruins of the ancient facility where the Hades Extinction Protocol was perfected. A testing process that ran hundreds of trials, each of them using a backup of Gaia. Hades told you this? It took some convincing, but yes. So, are you ready to go get what you've been searching for for the last six months? Or are you just going to stand there with your mouth open? You mentioned you've been busy. Exceptionally busy. But not so busy you couldn't teach Tanakh the rebels to override machines, ride them as mounts. Aloy, the only issue you should be concerned about is obtaining a Gaia backup. Perhaps if you focused more, you might actually see results. That's not exactly a denial, Silence. Take it any way you want. Just to... confirm? Hades said that there are backups of Gaia in there. Yes. Or were, anyway. A thousand years ago. Backups that didn't get purged when Ted Farrow wiped every copy of Apollo. Correct. According to Hades, this facility could not be accessed by remote signal. Not even Ted Farrow could touch the data here. Backups. Data complete. Gaia and her subordinate functions. Everything needed to reboot the system. 
Restore control over the terraforming system, save life on Earth. In there. So Hades said. So what are you waiting for? Did Hades reveal the source of the mysterious signal? The one that woke it, tried to destroy life on Earth? Yes, it did. Care to share? In due time. First, stay boy. Last I checked, you still had a super-intelligent AI named Gaia to reboot. Yeah, the same Gaia who had to destroy herself 20 years ago because of the signal? It stopped being transmitted years ago. It's no longer a threat. What if it repeats? It won't. Even if it did, well... Look, the details are complicated, but the signal required Hades to take effect. Delete Hades from any backup you reboot, and Gaia is safe. Now stop wasting time. Go get a backup. All right. I'll search the facility for a Gaia backup. But just to be clear, Silence, if this ends up being another one of your tricks... It's a gene-locked hatch, Eloy. You're literally the only person who can open it. How could I set a trap inside? Trick me again, Silence, and our next conversation will be face to face. Though you won't have much to say on account of my spear being buried in your throat. Aloy, thanks to me, everything you've desired, everything you've been fumbling about, unable to achieve for six months, is now within your grasp. Now, I know you didn't learn much about manners growing up a Nora outcast, but in a situation like this, you say thank you, and I say you're welcome. <laughs>